What's good, YouTube? Today we have a major, major review for you. We got the Jordan 37, the 37th signature model for Michael Jordan. Of course, many regard as the GOAT. Personally, my favorite player of all time. So to me, it's a big deal every time we see Jordan Brand come out with the signature model that has Michael Jordan's name on it, all right? So this particular model is the Jordan 37. I'm gonna keep it a buck, right? So I paid this with my own money, and even if I was gifted, I would let you guys know, just so you know you're getting the most unbiased review. At first look, I did not like these at all. It went from the 36, which is one of my favorite models, and we're gonna pull out a 36 for you. This 36 is probably my favorite model in the 30s right very clean right curves clean silhouette no lines no ridges so very different than we're gonna see from the 37 very shortly but the 36 is one of my favorite models period especially beyond 30 right beyond 15 this is one of my favorite models right I think I have so many pairs of these and I'm probably gonna do a collection video so how many pairs I picked up of the Jordan 36 one of my favorite recent Jordan signatures to come out, right? The 34, the 35, and the 36 were really, really good. So when I saw the 37, I seen they have some DNA of the 36, but some things are missing. Again, aesthetically, I didn't like the 37 as much as I liked the 36, but we're gonna get into the 37 as well, right? Now, the box. So we'll start off with the box. They have this sleeve over this box, and I'll tell you now, it's annoying. Just throw the sleeve away. It's really pointless. So they have the 23 on which side? This side, so you see it here. So you get the 23 here, you have the Jumpman logo, 23 on this side, all of the Nike stuff that you get usually. And then you have the actual box that's underneath this. So we're gonna slide this out. I'm probably gonna throw this away. Just being honest, I'm gonna throw it away. I got my pair from finish line this pair in particular you have the 23 glossed on the top i actually like that and then you have this some sort of design now i'm not sure if every box is going to be different i guess we'll soon tell you do have the same ring that you get on the 36 box and then you have your tagging right now this box opens up really easily. Maybe that's why they put the sleeve, but it's not a Velcro box like we get on the Jordan 36. Either way, this box is gonna be as is, and I'm throwing that one away, all right, for easy access. So we open it up. We have the pairs, okay? Now, this is by far the best colorway so far, especially out of the two that were leaked so you had the light bone colorway which i believe now it's on jordan or nike.com you could look at the promotional pictures and this one is the second colorway that's been floating around and here we have it the jordan 37 this is the hair colorway this is to me by far my favorite colorway of course i want to play ball in these but if i had to keep a sneaker in the collection for wearing purposes this is the colorway so far that I'm definitely gonna keep. If I have to get a second pair to play ball in, I'd rather do that versus mess up this pair, all right? The Jordan 37 takes a bunch of cues from, not a bunch, I mean not OD, but it takes enough cues from this guy right here. The Jordan 7 hair, right? And first thing you notice is the colorway. So same colorway, same tongue almost <laughs> in design. And we have on this tongue, you get the Jumpman logo with this graphic pattern, same as you would get on the Hair 7s. And then this whole white and red theme, man. It just looks really clean on a sneaker. And we're going to show you a couple of more Hair Jordans. So stay tuned. Trust me, this is going to be a really in-depth review on this Jordan 37. All right, so now we get to the bottoms. And you can see the similarities on the bottoms. 
even down to the ankle part. So obviously, if you guys aren't familiar with the Jordan 7, we have a Hirachi style booty. And then this part really doesn't have any significance as far as performance. So they're kind of just some wings that kind of flap around. Um, but what's really holding you in is the Hirachi booty with the heel counter. Same goes here, right? So you see these little flaps here. They're not even connected to the Lino weave, as you guys can see. But they have some really nice cushioning. You do have memory foam on the ankles, memory foam on the heel. Same style almost as the Jordan 7, where you have this heel counter that really kind of locks you in. I mean, I know it looks like a high top, but this is almost like a mid top in a lot of ways. And most of the material you get on the ankle is mostly like fluff. It's just gonna be an extra layer of fabric, not necessarily a part of the shoe. So there is that. Now, let me show you a little bit more details of the shoe. I'm gonna take this out so you guys can see through the shoe. And as you can see there, I can see right through to you, right? Uh, so it's gonna be very reminiscent of the Jordan 36. The Lino weave was amazing, super lightweight, super durable. Now, I can see why they went with these things. I'm going to talk about these little, like, side straps in a minute. But there was one complaint, I guess, about the Jordan 36, which is my favorite basketball sneaker to play ball in, is when you step side to side laterally, it does feel like you can roll over in a sense. You won't. You didn't. I didn't personally. I never rolled my foot in this. But you're really pushing the Lino weave to the side wall as much as it could possibly go to. And I think they added this little design here that you see, and we're gonna also look into the design of the seven because it's very similar, but they did this to kind of have some more reinforcement. So when you are going from side to side, you're getting some sort of containment, right? That's my guess. I'm not sure if it's designed only, but that's my guess. If I had a guess, that's the reason why. But the Lino weave is actually a little bit more open than the 36. So as you can see how tight knit the 36 is, the Lino weave has a lot more breathability or it's bigger spaces, I should say, than the 36. I'm assuming they're using this side, I guess, weave as a little bit more reinforcement in general, but very lightweight upper, which is beautiful. And very comfortable, extremely comfortable. So that's a plus for them keeping that on the 37, right? So let's go over some little things that I wanted to show you guys on the 37. So first things first, you have your AJ 37 on the tip of the toe, right? You see that basket weave material that Lino weave is really nice. Laces come up. You do have like a fuse around the laces. Not my favorite material, especially because the Jordan 36, they didn't really use it. They used leathers and patent leather and suede around this material. So a little bit different, but that's what they decided to use. Okay, you do have a two and a three dot here. Hopefully you guys can see it. So that's pretty cool. As we wrap around, we get this diamond etched midsole. So I wanted to show you another sneaker that reminded me of. You get this diamond etched midsole on the Jordan 23. Looks pretty close, right? And then you had this piece of leather that kind of wraps around the sneaker and then it goes into your heel counter, right? Now that reminded me a little bit of the Jordan 22. So the way this wraps around and goes into the heel counter 
the way this looks it edges up is the way this edges up it gave me Jordan 22 vibes personally then we have the AJ 7 on the back but it has three dots to show you it's not only the AJ7, it's the AJ37. Jumpman on the back. Formula 23 foam, all right? Pretty cool. Like the fact you could kind of see through it. It actually says Formula 23 on the back. Very hard to capture, but it says it right there. We take a look at the bottom, carbon fiber plate. Right, something we've seen since the Jordan 11. But funny enough, no more Eclipse plate. In fact, I enjoyed the Eclipse plate so much, but no more Eclipse plate on the Jordan 37. But they did something interesting. If you ever seen a cutout of this cut open, and shout out to the foot doctor, I believe he did it. There's a little space in the midsole. And I think the spaces are for when you compress the shoe, it gives the material room to compress, whether it's Zoom or whether it's the Formula 23. Two huge Zoom units in the front. One big one, top loaded, one right underneath, huge. And then you have your Formula 23 crash pad on the back. Now on the bottom of the shoe, you have your 30 and you have your seven. So three, seven on the bottoms i believe it also says 23 if you really want to reach this could be a two i guess or vice versa you know maybe this is the two i don't know but i know the three is definitely there on purpose and the seven is there on purpose as well now on the bottom it pays homage to 1992 you do have back-to-back -back gold medal, 1992, of course, he won back-to-back -back championships. MVP, he won back-to-back -back MVPs as well. And then you have scoring champ. And what else? That is it. All right, Jumpman logo. Carbon fiber looks really good. Nothing really on the front except air zoom here. Okay. Okay. You have your pull tab, very close to the Jordan 7, but of course the Jordan 7 actually had seven. I love that. I mean, it would have been great for them to have the 37 in some sort of triangular, even if it was really small, I wouldn't have mind that, but that would have been dope to pay homage to the 37 in this sort of way. They could have definitely done it. Right, so that's the Jordan 37. I can't wait to play in these, man. I think these are gonna be a great performer and there's one thing that I'm a little bit pissed off about is them getting rid of the zoom strobel full length. To me, you could have added the full length zoom with still keeping the Formula 23 in the back. To me, full length zoom strobel units are a must in every signature sneaker. It's perfect. And just in case the Formula 23 doesn't give you enough bounce back, the zoom is always there on top of it to kind of give you that bounce back. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that but i also understand that most players especially myself we play off of our forefoot so we typically play from here on and once in a while you may do a move here and there that may require a heel step in like a drop step if you do a drop step in a post that may require some heel spin to it but for them to let go of the full length zoom strobel to me is crazy so that would be one thing that i'm hoping I'm not disappointed when I play in it, but we're gonna find out, right? So this is my favorite Jordan 7. Like I said earlier, the Bordeaux and the Olympics are very close, but this is my absolute favorite Jordan 7. And then we have other sneakers that also pay homage to the hair Jordan. Matter of fact, we're gonna show you this one because this one's actually got the Jordan hair on the tongue. So this is a Jordan mid. I believe 2015 when these came out and this is a mid bro this is what it is this is what it was i actually bought this like a whole size smaller because they were very difficult to find in general and you have hair on the back you have hair with bugs on the tongue the design 
I love this colorway. Such a clean colorway. This light silver with the white with the red. And then I would say one of the most highest quality material sneakers that I've come across this year is this Jordan 1 Comfort. I don't know if all the Comforts are pretty high material like this, but the suede on this is absolutely buttery. I wanted to try one of the Jordan 1 Comforts. They do have a zoom unit, I believe in the heel. I wanted to see how comfortable the Jordan 1 Comfort was. And to me, this was the best colorway that I think came out so far of the Jordan 1 Comfort. Leather on the swoosh, suede panels that overlay it. Uh, just a beautiful looking sneaker. So of course, these all kind of pay homage to the Jordan 37. And as I said before, I love the colorway. So I'm hoping this is a great performer. Uh, we're gonna definitely give you a performance review as well. And I'm an old man, so I'm giving you like a real like 40 year old man review. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna keep these for indoor play only. Maybe if I get another pair on discount or another pair for free, somehow I could use that for outdoor use just to kind of test it. But other than that, I'm gonna keep these for indoor play only, right? I think I touched on everything. One thing I did notice is the breathability on the footbed is no longer there, which I thought was a really nice thing that the Jordan 36 did. We'll see how it is, man. And colorways will obviously be whether this shoe is a hit or miss. As I said before, I'm not totally in love with the light bone colorway, but again, this colorway to me is a lot nicer. I can see aesthetically why some people may not like it. I think these little lines, although they're really reminiscent of how this line is, I think kind of turns a lot of people off. We're gonna see more colorways and hopefully we'll have dope PEs and that'll kind of change the mind for at least some people, all right? On that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Jordan 37. We'll be back again without peace.